Good morning, and to those fathers attending worship in person and online, happy Father's Day. Welcome to worship at Grace Street United Church. My name is Kathy Welby, and I chair the worship planning team. Today, we celebrate the Indigenous Day of Prayer by coming together to honour and appreciate the rich heritage, wisdom and spirituality of the Indigenous peoples who have been the stewards of this land since time immemorial. The words of the service will be on the screen so you can follow along. The words in yellow are said by the worship leader and the words in white are said by all. During the gathering song today, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to watch and listen to a video of the Ottawa First Nations traditional drums playing the sacred drum. The sacred drum is significant to the First Nations people. It represents Mother Earth and her universal heartbeat. In this sacred space, we are called to open our hearts and minds, to listen with compassion, and to learn from the teachings of our Indigenous siblings. Now I'd like you to join with me for the territorial acknowledgement. As we gather here today 
Let us take a moment to acknowledge the land upon which we stand and the indigenous peoples which have stewarded this land since time memorial. We recognize that our worship space is situated on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, Cree, OJ Cree, Denny and Dakota peoples and the Métis Nation and we extend our gratitude and respect to the Indigenous Nations for their enduring presence and care for this land. In this moment of recognition, we honour the diverse histories, cultures and spiritualities of the Indigenous peoples who continue to shape and enrich our communities. We commit ourselves to the ongoing work of reconciliation, healing and justice, walking along the Indigenous peoples with humility empathy and open hearts. As we worship and celebrate together, let us be mindful of our shared responsibility to protect and nurture the land, to honour the wisdom and resilience of Indigenous peoples, and to cultivate relationships rooted in respect, understanding and unity. In doing so, we contribute to a more inclusive, equitable and compassionate world for all. So I have a couple of announcements today and I'd like to start off by saying thank you to the members of the worship team, Donna Cameron, Luann Campbell and Gemma Equidavis for leading the service this morning. Thanks also goes out to Diane McCanty who's worked behind the scenes creating one of the teaching moments for this morning. The worship season is winding down and we will be taking a summer break. Next Sunday, we will have guest speakers from Community 204. Uh, this is a grassroots group that works in the city here with um, folks living on the streets, but they do a lot of a similar work to the Bear Clan, but different. And um, I'm hope, what I'm hoping from that next week is maybe see whether they're doing some work in our Elmwood area, because as you know, around the church here, we, we've experienced vandalism. We have folks sleeping on benches and all sorts of stuff and maybe we can learn some things and that's what I'm hoping for next week. So come and help uh, and meet uh, Daniel and Devon, Devon is his name, and they're really thrilled to be able to come out. And then next Sunday, uh, the, next Sunday, June 30th. So first off, good news, the region has stamped, approved, dotted all the I's, the T's, it is official, our collaboration has been approved with the Big Red Church. So, so we're full steam ahead, and what a great way to start. But on Sunday, June 30th, we're going to go over there and join in with them for worship. It's on, at, on Coburg Street. Um, and the choir, they've invited the choir to come over, so there'll be lots of music. And then they've extended a special invitation for us to stay for a barbecue afterwards. And if you haven't already done so, Gwen had a clipboard back there today, just seeing who might show up so they make sure you have a hamburger cooked for you, okay? So that'll be a good way to start off. Um, then the rest of the summer, we're traveling amongst our to be jigging churches in the neighborhood, known as Church Rama. And if you, I'm not gonna take any more time up here, but for those of you that are new here and have never experienced Church Rama, wanna know more about it, you can see me after church. Luann has to get out, both well, Donna and Luann have to get out of here after church, but come and see me. I have no problem with sharing the good news of that. So we'll move towards lighting of the Christ candle now. And once again, we'll say this in unison. O oh, great spirit, creator of all light and life, as we gather in this sacred space to celebrate the Indigenous Day of Prayer, we now light the Christ candle as a symbol of your divine presence amongst us. We remember the words of Christ, the light of the world, who calls us to be the beacon of hope, healing and reconciliation. In the name of the Creator, the Great Spirit, we pray. Amen.
So our opening hymn this morning is uh, Voices United 308, Many and Great, O God, Are Your Works. This hymn originated with the Do Dakota Nation. The composer of this song, Joseph Renville, son of a French-Canadian trader and a Dakota mother, wrote Dakota hymns and translated the Bible into Dakota. There are originally seven verses to this hymn based on Jeremiah, to, Je Jeremiah 10, verses 12 to 13. The English paraphrase of the first and last stanzas was written by Philip Frazier and reflects Psalm 102, 20, verse 24, and Psalm 8, verses 3 to 4. The traditional Dakota tune has been named La Qui Parle, for the place where Renville lived, and the name of the creator is Wankatonka and translates to great mystery. On this Indigenous Day of Prayer, we gather in solidarity with the First Peoples of this land. We celebrate their wisdom, culture, and spirituality. We honour the sacred drum, the heartbeat of Mother Earth, echoing the voice of our ancestors. May our hearts beat in harmony with the rhythm of creation. Come. Let us join in worship, embracing the beauty of Indigenous heritage and strength. With open hearts, we seek to journey together on the path of healing and reconciliation. You're invited to stand as you're able for the opening prayer. For those who feel comfortable standing, as we offer this prayer, we will turn as indicated, sending our gratitude and our hopes out to the four cardinal directions, east, south, west, and north. Creator, we give thanks for the knowledge you give to us through all the traditions of the world. Help us to honor the gifts that each tradition offers. We seek to take the path of love. We give thanks for the East, for the sun that rises to begin each new day. We give thanks for new life, for youth. We give thanks for new learning and new experiences. We seek to take the path of love. We give thanks for the South, 
for the growth of the summertime in our lives, for the teachings to be kind to ourselves and others. Help us, who are elders, love and respect children and youth. Help us to care for the elderly and those who cannot care for themselves. We seek to take the path of love. We give thanks for the West, for the understanding of how we care for the Earth. Creator, help us to use this understanding to bring joy and new life to the world. We seek to take the path of love. We give thanks for the North. Help us to receive gifts of wisdom and new perspectives from all peoples. Help us to grow our roots of compassion deeper as we journey. Together, we will take the path of love for ourselves and for each other. Amen. Please remain standing as you're able for the next hymn, More Voices, 143, We Cannot Own the Sunlit Sky. Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O God. Amen. I spent quite a bit of time thinking about what would be a good way to celebrate this Indigenous Day of Prayer. I wondered, how could we celebrate people who have different spiritual practices than we do in a respectful way. I started to think about what I could say to help us make a connection or create a kind of understanding with Indigenous people on this day. 
It is a known fact, um, because I found this on Google, <laughs> that to make a connection with people, it is often helpful to look for similarities. Differences are also a good thing to explore because checking out differences helps us to grow and learn. But today, I want to make a connection with Indigenous people. So I would like to tell you about practice their spirituality, usually depending on where they live. People in different regions have different practices. Like Reverend, Reverend Earl Gould spoke of last week, if you were able to see the service, this is similar with Christians. There are many Christian religions that believe in Jesus, but we may or do or have church in different ways. Another similarity is many Indigenous people believe in a creator, a great spirit, or a great mystery that is a power of being that has created the world and everything in it. Well, generally we call our creator God, but we often use different words as well. Prayer is something we both share, and so is singing. The songs and prayers might sound different, but the practice is the same. So I'm wondering, is there anything anyone can think of that might uh, similarities in our spiritual practice that we might share with Indigenous people? Just gathering people together. Gathering people together. Very good. No? Okay, well, I have one more. The last similarity I have for you today is storytelling. Indigenous people share knowledge and pass on their culture and traditions by using storytelling. The stories often have lessons or teachings. This is similar to our scripture readings, and especially the parables told by Jesus. There are lessons to be learned from all teachings, and it's our job to figure out what these stories mean. So I have a video that I will now share with you <clears throat> that is in an indigenous story called the Rainbow Crow. It is a story about how the rainbow crow lost his sweet voice and brilliant colors by bringing the gift of fire to other woodland animals. So as you're watching, try and think of what the teaching or lesson might be in this story. So John, if we could have the video, please. Welcome to Sotmo Storytime. Today we're going to be reading a book called Rainbow Crow, retold by Nancy Van Lian, illustrated by Beatrice Vidal. I hope you enjoyed this book. Now let's get ready for story time. <laughs> Before the two-legged walk the earth, the weather was always warm and the animals were always happy. You look happy. But one day, something happened to cause the earth to grow cold. Tiny crystals, glittering like diamonds, drifted down from the sky, covering earth with a sparkling softness. What is that coming down? The animals seeing snow for the first time were not afraid. But soon the snow deepened and Mouse disappeared. The tip of his tail was all the animals could see and they began to worry. Then Rabbit disappeared. The tips of his ears were all the animals could see and they worried more. There's the ears, there's the tail. At last they gathered together in a clearing deep inside the forest to talk about the weather. What was needed, they decided, was a messenger to travel at once to the great sky spirit and ask him to stop the snow. But who would be willing to leave Earth to visit the distant place where the sky spirit dwelt? Hmm. Who do you think's gonna volunteer? 
Possum said, Owl is the wisest. Perhaps he should go. But no, the animals whispered, he might get lost in the light of day, so Owl should not go. Then Beaver said, perhaps Raccoon should go. But no, the animals argued, he might follow his tail instead of his nose, so Raccoon should not go. Then Skunk said, perhaps Coyote should go. But no, the animals shouted, Coyote is clever and loves to play tricks. He might chase the clouds or swallow the wind, so Coyote should not go. Who's next? Scritcha, scritcha, screecha, scratcha. Yippa, yappa, yow, yow. <laughs> the noisy animals screeched and howled because they could not decide who should visit the great sky spirit to ask him to stop the snow. And so the snow grew deeper and deeper and deeper. And the small animals climbed on top of the tall animals so they would not disappear. Look, everybody's climbing on each other's back. Suddenly, down from the top of the tallest tree flew Rainbow Crow, the most beautiful bird on earth, who called out to all the animals below in the sweetest voice of all birds, and he sang, I will go, I will stop the snow. And the animals, happy at last to have Crow as their messenger, chanted a song to praise. Rain, Rainbow Crow, stop the snow, Crow, Fly to the sky high, rain, rainbow crow. Then high up into the sky flew rainbow crow, far above the snow and the winds of the earth, way beyond the moon, the stars, and the clouds. For three days crow flew until he came upon the great sky spirit, who was too busy to notice. So rainbow crow began to sing, O oh, great spirit in the sky, you rule the earth from way up high. You make the creatures large and small. You are the ruler of us all. You make the trees and flowers grow. You cause the wind and clouds to blow. You make the rain, you make the snow. You make the cold on earth below. O oh, great spirit in the sky, for you I sing this lullaby. The great spirit stopped to listen. Never before had he heard such a sweet voice sing such a beautiful song, and he told Crow to choose a gift. Now Crow knew that far below on earth the snow was getting so deep that soon all the animals would disappear, so he asked this great spirit to stop the snow. The great spirit replied, No, Crow, I cannot stop the snow, for snow has a spirit of its own. When snow spirit leaves the clouds to visit with his friend, wind spirit, the snow will stop but earth will still be cold. So Crow asked the Great Spirit to stop the cold. The Great Spirit replied, No, Crow, I cannot stop the cold. All I can do is give you the gift of fire. Fire will keep you warm and will melt the snow so that your friends will be content and un until warm weather returns. The Great Spirit picked up a stick, put a bit of fire on the end of it, and handed it to Crow. I will give you this gift but once. Hurry. Fly back to earth before the fire disappears. Off flew Crow. The crow has a stick with fire on it. On the first day as Crow flew down, showering sparks of fire darkened his tail feathers. On the second day as Crow flew down, the fire burned brighter and the stick grew shorter and all of Crow's feathers were covered with soot. On the third day as Crow flew down, the fire was so hot and the stick was so short the smoke and ash blew into Crow's mouth and his voice became cracked and hoarse. Coco! And when at last Crow returned to the clearing in the forest, all the animals had disappeared. Only the tops of the tallest trees could be seen, their branches sprouting through the deep snow. So Crow flew down close to the pale, pale ground, around and around until the fire melted the snow and his friends were safe. He's flying around and around, melting the snow. And this tiny stick of fire became the grandfather of all fires. And for this, all the animals on earth thank Crow. They danced and chanted a song of praise. Kind young brave Crow saved us from snow, flew to the sky high, brought back fire. Now just plain Crow, no more rainbow.
That's because he, instead of being a rainbow, he's black now from the fire. At last, Crow, all alone, flew off to a distant tree where he wept. He was no longer beautiful. He could no longer sing a sweet song. His rainbow feathers were gone forever. When Snow Spirit emptied the clouds and joined Wind Spirit, the snow stopped, but Crow still wept. The great Sky Spirit heard Crow and came down from the sky. And when he saw Crow, he said, Soon the two-legged will appear on earth. He will take the fire and be master of all but you. For being so brave and unselfish, I give you the gift of freedom. The two-legged will never hunt you, for your meat tastes like fire and smoke. The two-legged will never capture you, for your beautiful voice is now crackly and hoarse. The two-legged will never want your feathers, because your rainbow colors are now black. But your black feathers will shine, and they will reflect all the colors on earth. If you look closely, you will see. Then Crow looked and he saw hundreds of tiny rainbows shining in his black feathers and he was content. The great spirit returned to his home in the distant sky and Crow happily returned to his friends in the forest, proud that he was now Black Crow with shining feathers full of tiny rainbows. There's a crow. The end. Thank you for reading this book with me, Rainbow Crow. Now please share with your friends and subscribe so you don't miss any future stories. Bye. So I have a couple of ideas of what the story of the Rainbow Crow is about. But before we talk about what the story means, I'm going to ask Kathy to uh, come and share an activity that we can all participate in. John, am I okay on this mic here? Okay. First, I want to thank Diane McCanty for coming up with this idea for us. So, we have two crows, and first I wanted to say, usually for our time with the child with us, we have a story, and we send James and David back to the corner, but today I'm inviting them to come and join me at this table, and I'm gonna invite all of you to help them with the project so we can, we can do this. So it's gonna be a whole community project today. Diane has created this so that it's what, turning into either like a mobile or a, a, almost like a dream catcher. And last night I put together some feathers. I've got tons of feathers, yarn, and we're gonna tie them in here. But I need about 24 of these. They don't have to be exactly like this. You can put two feathers on them and, I, and they're just tied on. So once we get these done, we're going to hang them in the narthex. Uh, we've brought in a branch so the, our crows can live in there. So um, I hope you have some fun with this today so you can pull up to the table. There's uh, scissors there, but maybe come over to, I'll, and around the feathers, and just be creative and let your inner child come out today. Don't be shy, folks. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy.
I'm expecting big things out of you, eh? <laughs> Okay, it looks like everyone's underway pretty well, so I'm going to continue to talk, so we're not here all afternoon, all right? So I think that the story of the Rainbow Crow is about helping others. It's about sacrifice, courage, strength, and endurance. Is there anything anyone else took from the story that you can think of that maybe the story is telling us. Bravery. Bravery. Compassion. Compassion. It talks about the origins of fire. So there's some creation story in there. So very good, thank you. But now I'm going to move on to our scripture reading for today, which is also our Christian version of storytelling. And today I'm going to read from Mark 4, 26 to 34. And I'm reading from the Easy English Bible. Jesus tells a story about seeds. Then Jesus said, I will tell you a story about the kingdom of God. It is like a man who throws seeds in the field. Then he sleeps each night and wakes up each day. The seeds start to grow into plants. They continue to grow, 
The man does not know how this happens. The soil causes the plants to grow. The leaves of the plant grows first, then flowers appear. Then the plant makes new seeds. When the seeds have completely grown, the man will cut down the plants. It is time for him to take the seeds to use for food. Jesus tells a story about a very small seed. Jesus said, I will tell you another story about the kingdom of God. This story shows what the kingdom of God is like. It is like this. A man takes a seed of a plant called mustard. He plants it in the soil. It is smaller than any other seed that people plant in the soil. But when it starts to grow, it becomes bigger than the largest bush. It, um, it will have big branches. Then birds will come and they will live there. They will build their nests in the shade of the branches. Jesus taught God's message to people. He used many stories like these. He told the people how, as much as they could understand. He always used stories to teach people. Then he explained everything to his own disciples when he was alone with them. So would anyone like to give a thought about maybe what our scripture reading is about? <laughs> or are you too into feathers? <laughs> about growth. Ah, very good. Let's hold that one on pause. <laughs> New life? Um, well, I thought the story about seeds begins with Jesus saying, I will tell you a story about the kingdom of God. The second story is about a very small seed that also starts with, Jesus said, I will tell you another story about the kingdom of God. So I was thinking, maybe this is a good hint. But what I want to share with you now is something I found very interesting and possibly made my job easier today for interpreting this scripture. I was at the viewing of Karen Maxwell a week ago Monday, and behold, on the back of the funeral lease lit is an excerpt from a June 18, 2006 sermon on Mark, 24, 20, Mark 4, verses 26 to 34, the mustard seed parable, and it's written by Karen Maxwell. So I'll share with you Karen's interpretation of our scripture today. Karen writes, what does this parable mean? When I look on the internet, I found the parable meant growth. Very good, Gemma. <laughs> I thought all the growth that I have experienced in my life and how it came about. As I was growing up, I was told right was right and wrong was wrong. It was a little more complicated. It was a little more uncomplicated time. My problem was I could always find a gray area. It was not always appreciated. I have found that we can't control everything around us. Not everyone thinks like I do, and if I expect others to accept what I think, I must be prepared to listen to what they think, and once I start listening, I am changed and my perceptions are changed. Having ch five children has taught me a lot. They have challenged my beliefs and introduced me to, to experiences that I never thought I would have. Some good, some not so good, but they definitely have helped me to grow and learn. Jesus accepted everyone for who they were, and I believe as Christians, we need to go out of our comfort zone and accept others for who they are. It is not always easy. When we are hurt or do not understand why something is happening in our lives, it is not easy to simply have faith and know that it will all be taken care of. I think God expects us to lear learn all our, our lives. We have no control over the sun and the rain, so we do what we can, and that is put the seed in the ground and have faith. The seed will come up. God wants us to leave it in his hands and know that whatever happens, we do not need to worry. Well, Karen... I would have a hard time writing something as worthy and as suitable for our service today. Um, on the Saturday before yesterday, my sister and I were at a craft sale in free mar flea market. One of the vendors was a lovely young indigenous girl selling beaded earrings she had created. 
My sister asked if it was culturally appropriate for her, a non-Indigenous person, to wear a pair of her earrings. The girl smiled and told us, Indigenous peoples like to share their culture. Wearing the earrings would be considered cultural appreciation. So this circles me back to my original thought today. How can we celebrate Indigenous Day of Prayer in a respectful way? And as Karen wrote it so well, not everyone thinks like I do. And if I expect others to accept what I think, I must be prepared to listen to what they think. And once I start listening, I am changed and my perceptions are changed. Amen. Amen. So let us join our voices together. Stand as you're able to sing called by sky and earth. Sorry, Dina. <laughs> you can finish that. And we're singing verses one, two, refrain, verses three, four, refrain. the bird coming along there, Kathy. She's holding it up there. <laughs> Looking great. Okay. So, have you noticed the two white boxes attached high on the walls above the doors to the office on either side of the room? They are our new speakers. This microphone is also new. Have you noticed a difference in the sound quality of our services since these have been installed? Yes. Glad to hear it. <laughs> we talked. I'm glad everyone said yes. I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> 
we talked about the purchase of the new speakers at the annual meeting, and folks were in agreement that we needed an improvement in our sound. So a big thank you to John Sawchuck up there for arranging the purchase and the installation of the speakers and the microphone. So as your new financial officer, I checked with the leadership team to see if we could make a special appeal to the congregation to pay for this audio improvement. As I mentioned in my teaching a few minutes ago, my sister Cheryl, with the help of Sandra Melgar and donations from Eleanor Harrison and Kathy Welby, purchased a table at a craft sale and flea market at Kildonan Community Church on June 8th. This craft sale was advertised in the Gray Street Weekly News, so we took it as an interest group. We sold some crafts, but our biggest hit was the baking table. And all the baking was prepared in the Gray Street kitchen the Thursday and Friday prior to the sale. We decided that the proceeds from this sale, which was $500, will go towards the cost of the speakers and microphone. After presenting our interest group activity at the leadership meeting, Greg Holoka volunteered to make a thermometer to monitor our progress of achieving the $5,000 goal cost of the speaker. Another $2,000 was donated after the leadership team meeting. So we were off, barely audible, whispery. Now we're at quiet talking, and we're looking for loud talking, louder talking, loudest talking, screaming, plug your ears, and run away. <laughs> so we are halfway to our goal. So I have some, um, some special appeal pledge envelopes that will be available in the narthex. Please consider making an extra donation to the purchase of our new audio system, or maybe start an interest group like Cheryl and I did to raise some funds. Talk to Ellen or Harrison if you have any questions about how interest groups work. And if you're not sure who Eleanor is, talk to me and I will introduce you. So any and all donations are really appreciated. You will receive a tax donation. And let's get the volume right up to run away. <laughs> Thank you. Our offering will now be presented. We'll now do the offering. Uh, next slide. Uh, beloved community, as we gather on this Indigenous Day of Prayer, let us reflect on the abundant blessing and gifts the Creator has generously bestowed upon us we are invited to share these blessings with others. The act of giving is not only about financial resources, but also about sharing our time, our talents, like in making this crop, and our heart. In this spirit of generosity, let us open ourselves to the call of the Great Spirit to support the work of reconciliation. Let us give with joyful and grateful hearts. As the offering is brought forward, we will sing together Voices United 581 when we are living, verse 2 only.
through the prayer of dedication. Creator God, as we bring this offering forward today, we remember the power of the sacred drum, uniting us with the heartbeat of Mother Earth and the voices of our ancestors. Through our offering, may we contribute to building a world where love, justice, and compassion flourishes. Amen. Let us now join together in the prayers of the people. And so I will be reading uh, the verses and then there is a response that will, you will join in with. Great Spirit, creator of all, we come before you in gratitude and reverence, lifting up the prayers of our hearts. We join our voices in the sacred spaces with humility and love seeking your guidance, wisdom, and strength for the healing of the land and the renewal of our relationship with Mother Earth, we pray. Great Spirit, receive our prayers. For the wisdom of indigenous elders and leaders, that their teachings may inspire us to travel together in unity, respect, we pray. For the survivors of residential schools and their families, that they may find healing, comfort, and justice, we pray. Great Spirit, receive our prayer. For the ongoing work of reconciliation and the building of strong, respectful relationships between indigenous and non-indigenous people, we pray. Great Spirit, receive our prayer. For the courage to confront and dismantle systemic racism, colonialism, and injustice, and for the wisdom to create, <coughs> sorry, to create a more equitable and compassionate society, we pray. Great Spirit, hear our prayer. For the sacred drum, that its rhythm may continue to unite us in harmony with the heartbeat of Mother Earth and the voices of our ancestors, we pray. For the churches and faith communities seeking to be instruments of justice, peace, and reconciliation, that they may be guided by your spirit and sustained by your grace, we pray. In silence of our hearts, we lift our personal prayers and petitions, trusting in your loving presence and care. Great Spirit, hear the prayers of your people, spoken and unspoken. May we be bearers of your love, justice, and compassion as we travel together on this journey of healing and reconciliation. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And we join our voices now in this prayer that Jesus taught us speaking the words as they have been taught in the indigenous Lord's Prayer. Great Spirit, our Creator, who is in all places, sacred is your name. May your wisdom guide us, your will be done in our lives as it is throughout creation. Provide for us today the nourishment we need and forgive us our wrongs, as we forgive those who have wronged us. Lead us on the path of understanding and respect, and protect us from ignorance and harm. For you are the source of all power, beauty, and love, from generation to generation, forever and always. Amen. We will now in hymn 163 in more voices, river running in you and me.
was beautiful. And for those who are at home, uh, this is what the hands created. It's, it's getting there, there's a few more to add. But yeah, you can uh, cut out your own crow at home and buy some feathers and make your own little uh, rainbow crow. So thank you to all the wonderful hands that joined in this worship in creating this beautiful memory. And that being said, we are now going to join in the commissioning. May the Creator, the Great Spirit, fill our hearts with love, your minds, with wisdom, your spirit with courage. As you leave this sacred space, carry the heartbeat of the sacred drum with you. May you be inspired to unite, celebrate indigenous culture's richness, and seek healing and rec reconciliation for all. Amen. We will now join in the final hymn, Voices United 429, as we sing, May the blessing of God be upon you. Thank you. 